Hey, good morning, Bobcats. It's Mrs. Peterson. Um, this is my very, very first time ever doing a video along with a PowerPoint. So bear with me as I learn, as we all learn how to learn on the internet um, during this time of COVID-19. So I hope you and your families are all safe and you're doing well. Um, I do want to give you some more um, interesting information about the Renaissance. And today, what we're going to be learning about is the printing press. So let's get into it. Okay, here we go. So Johannes Gutenberg is the name of the person who invented the printing press. Now I'm going to pause here for just one second and say, if you want to do this the same way we do in the classroom, what you would do is you would, of course, write down in your notebook on your focus note page, uh, and remember anything in red is highlighted and would be an answer to your study guide question. So what I would recommend is do this video um, or this. Yeah, sorry, it is a video slash PowerPoint. Write down all your notes, go and look at all the uh, extra links that I'm going to attach and um, finish off your study guide and then go play Kahoot to see how well you do and see how well you know the information. OK, sorry. Back to it. So Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press in 1440, and that is absolutely revolutionary for that time period. Why? Because it allows for the mass production of information. It massive tons of information is now printed and available for people to read. And remember before this in the medieval time period, people really weren't reading. And at the beginning of the Renaissance, uh, most people were illiterate. Your uh, very wealthy and nobles, and of course your clergymen, uh, your higher up clergymen, uh, they, would, they were actually really good at reading and understanding information. But remember they're holding um, tight to that knowledge and so the general public, your uh, commoners, your peasants don't know how to read at this time period. And anything that was printed was printed in Latin and most people didn't speak Latin. Therefore, in order to be able to read, you had to learn how to speak, read and write in Latin. Um, so this is a revolutionary machine that comes around. Now we have flyers and newspapers that are available. Um, just the dissemination of information is massive, meaning uh, the spread of that information, getting that information out to the people is massive. We also have universities who now have a textbook for their students. The students are now reading um, in Latin, of course, uh, eventually it'll be in the vernacular as well, but universities are spreading this out. And this is another way uh, that we're spreading Renaissance ideas during this time period. People would travel all over Europe to go to universities. Uh, they would learn those Renaissance ideas. They would take those ideas back home into their uh, countries that they lived in, um, that could be Austria or um, Poland or whatever, wherever they were from, they would bring those Renaissance ideas. It's actually one of the reasons that helped spread ideas of the Renaissance. So I'm not sure if this is going to work. I'm going to try to play it and then we'll see if it actually works. Otherwise, I will include this link. So this is a video about how the printing press actually works. And I don't think it's going to work. OK, so we'll do that. I'll add that on there. Um, you can go back and watch it later. OK, so the very first thing that was printed on that printed press is called the Gutenberg Bible. And what they would do is they would print this portion here and this portion over here. They would print that on a piece of paper and they would add all this lovely scroll work, all this beautiful detail. They would add that later by hand. So of course, that took a long time. But what's revolutionary now is you can print this page and you can print dozens or even hundreds or even thousands of this one page very, very quickly. Whereas prior to this, we would have monks that were copying books and it could take a day to do one page. So that's that's pretty amazing, pretty revolutionary. So the first Bible was printed in Latin. Um, and then eventually the Bible is printed in the vernacular, the common language of the people. So if you were in Germany, then that Bible was eventually written in German. And this is going to be covered up. So let me move. Well, can't move me. Oh, well. Um, 
what ends up happening is the vernacular, because the Bible is written in the vernacular, in the language of the people, so people don't have to learn how to read and write in Latin, it is, it promotes literacy. People say, oh, wow, hey, I want to learn how to read the Bible. I want to read the Bible for myself. So it promotes literacy. It promotes people wanting to learn how to read. Um, and it also promotes Christianity and helps spread Christianity even more. This is my lovely little Gutenberg song that I love to use. It is not mine, um, actually, it's someone else's, but the video probably isn't going to work here. So we're gonna skip this one and I will attach that link as well. Alrighty, so let's take a look at that printing press. It ends up spreading the Renaissance ideas all over Europe, all over the known world at that time, really a lot like the internet does today. A lot of people liken the printing press to a printer, but really the way that information is spread all throughout Europe really acts like the internet. Um, obviously, we can see some differences from how we use the internet today, just like I'm doing this for you um, and COVID-19 is out there, so we're finding ways to get information to you, but it's that spread of the Renaissance ideas, not the printing of the actual pages that we're talking about right now, but getting that information out to the people, that is really um, revolutionary, just like the internet was revolutionary for information and the dissemination, or dissemination of uh, information throughout the entire world today. So why is it important? Why do we care about the printing press? One, it creates an increased demand for education. People want to learn. And I know, I know you guys, I know my students, you're saying, I don't want to learn, but really you do. Why? How do I know that? Because you're sitting here and watching this. That's how I know you want to learn. Um, also, access to knowledge improves. We have a lot more information out there. There are books and flyers and newspapers, uh, all kinds of information for people to access. What do they need to, to do in order to get that information? They just need to learn how to read and they do. So this printed information is faster and more affordable for them. Prior to this, books are so, so expensive that only the wealthy um, and the church have access to those books. It promotes literacy. People learn how to, to read. When people ask me what you know, what is the one person, who's the one person, or what is the one thing throughout history that you think made the biggest impact in the world? For me, it's that printing press because the entire world ends up learning how to read largely because of this printing press. So I think it's uh, really, really important. Uh, also, Christianity spreads, just as I was saying earlier, the uh, Bible ends up being written in the vernacular. People wanna learn how to read. They uh, start reading the Bible for themselves. Christianity spreads even more all throughout Europe, but also critical thinking. This says critical thinking right here. Um, increased learning and critical thinking. Now, one of the things that it does do is that people start questioning things in the Bible. They're reading the Bible for themselves and they realize, wait a minute, what it says in the Bible isn't necessarily matching up with what my priest is telling me. Why are they different? And so they really start questioning teachings from the church. So that starts happening and it really does lay the foundation for the Reformation. And that's gonna be coming up in our next chapter. Also, universities spread those Renaissance ideas from Italy all through Northern Europe. So this is what I was talking about earlier when I was saying that universities have these books and we have people who are traveling all over Europe. They are learning in these universities and they're learning these Renaissance ideas and they take those ideas and they bring, they bring them home with them. Some of these people become professors at uh, local universities and then they're teaching the Renaissance ideas as well. So lots of information being spread. Um, and then the exchange of new scientific knowledge. We are learning in those universities, those Renaissance ideas. One of them is the scientific method and how uh, the, the practice of science changes over time. So they're taking that information all the way through uh, Northern Europe as well. And it really does help stem the scientific revolution. It helps build it up and support it. And again, you have all those flyers and those newspapers that are printing all the information that we're finding out about the scientific revolution as well. And I have a Gutenberg poem that I will uh, link to this as well. And I think that is it, if I remember correctly.